Good morning, folks. Let's all be nice and welcome Mercury to class today, set to swing behind the sun and conjoined on the 10th. Lots happening with the planets this month, but that's for another day. Rain record of yesterday goes to Clay County, Tennessee with three inches in one hour. Don't forget to check Torcon for the U.S. severe weather threats today. Wrapping up a few items, the proton counts are still elevated. Radiation storm continues near the poles. I will be coming back to the sun, but I wanted to show the quiet here for the last 12 hours with those dark areas near the center being opposite polarity coronal holes. It's definitely that time of year. Take a look at the F1 layer critical frequency readings. Having a look at 2012 so far, this is the real story of change, folks. In case you forget, compared to last solar maximum, we are way juiced up. That began in 2006, and we appear poised for a repeat this fall. More over ionization in our collapsing upper atmosphere. Quickly pulling up the global incident map showing water shortages right now. This is a good tool used for a number of events like food shortages here. Each of these is clickable for more info. Some of the better ones include the wildfire map. Spain and Portugal could use their own version of this right now. You can pull up almost anything but it can get crowded so use the filters. Coming over to the RSOE which I prefer. More big quakes way up north. We also had a 4.9 close to Antarctica. On the right here is Alaska, on the left is Russia, and that orange blotch off the Kamchatka Peninsula is sulfur dioxide from a volcanic eruption that may pose a flight risk if any more ash comes out. Scotland joined Florida in seeing pilot whales beaching and dying, and northern Africa, an area ravaged by heat and wildfires, just took an amazing set of storms that caused death and damage across the entire region. Coming back to the sun, let's put everything in perspective. Three days ago, one of the most amazing eruptions ever seen took place when this filament lost magnetic equilibrium and ripped away from the sun. A good bit of the CME will miss Earth, but a glancing blow is almost certain. So what's this? A much smaller CME, it happened yesterday, but it will be a direct hit to Earth within about 24 hours after the first impact. Looking at the center of the sun, we see only a slight disturbance near that sunspot, but nevertheless, this was able to surge the right energy to force coronal particles out into space in that condensed CME, Earth off to the left here on Stereo A Core 2. So combined, we have two CMEs on the way, as you can see here on Noah's Endless Spiral. Eyes open, folks, the first one's about to ring the doorbell. But worse yet, our weakening magnetosphere should not be news to you and we are at unsettled levels prior to impact. The aforementioned radiation storm is juicing us up, sending the BZ tip south. It is breaching our shields along with solar plasma everywhere the red is above the blue and causing significant induced resonance upon multiple frequencies. And this active region might not be finished yet. Her center is delta at this point and it's a time bomb. This region down here had kept blue and red separate but that's changing as well. Eyes open for impact, folks. Our readings could be jumping already. If not, it's only a matter of time. She's coming. That's the news, folks. Be safe.